this no thrill It's worse than nil So draw the right conclusion Let there be still Welcome to episode number 80 of the Exploring Antinatalism podcast, a podcast showcasing the wide range of perspectives and ideas throughout antinatalism as it exists today, through interviews with antinatalist and non-antinatalist thinkers and creators of all kinds. Now running four years strong, I'm your host, Amanda Sukunik, and today, Lawrence Anton and John Williams of the newest antinatalist collective, Antinatalist Advocacy, return to tell us all about their upcoming event, the Antinatalist Advocacy Conference, Antinatalism at a Crossroads. Thanks so much for having us back. Yeah, Lawrence and John, welcome back to the Exploring Antinatalism podcast, guys. Yeah, it's great to be back on. It's great to have you. So we'll skip all of the the, the usual questions uh, you know, why are you an antinatalist? How do you feel about this? How do you feel about that? Because you guys are now veterans of the Exploring Antinatalism podcast, it's always a pleasure to have you guys on. I think the last time the two of you were here was for episode number 76 of the Exploring Antinatalism podcast, which was uh, just this last summer, July 1st, I believe is when it was uh, released. Uh, and that was for the grand announcement of AA, Antinatalist Advocacy. Um, so it's been about what four months or so since mm. the uh, the the inauguration, the announcement, the grand announcement? Um, so what's been like going on since that time? Before we get into like the big big news, like what's been happening in the world of AA? How's it going so far? What you guys been up to? Uh, I want to hear all about it. Well, John, do you want to do you want to kick off with the podcast because I've mostly been doing the conference, which we're going to get into, obviously. So yeah, definitely. So. Um, yeah, I think the past few months overall have been pretty great. Like we've been slowly building momentum uh, with the things that we're looking to do. We do have a long term strategy with lots of different activities, but definitely in the very kind of like early life of antinatalist advocacy, we're very much in the spreading ideas kind of phase. Um, so we've been releasing podcasts originally on a monthly basis. But now that I've finally figured out the tech um, and how to stand in front of my microphone, we've started doing two a month. Um, and yeah, that's been gradually building numbers. Um, I'd like to think the production quality is a little better than it was with our, compared to episode one. Um, we've got a ton of interesting guests and topics lined up as well. So I think overall that's going really well. Um, but the main activity that has been taken up most of our time, or should I say most of Lawrence's time, because I can't take too much credit for the organising. He's definitely done most of the organising. Is of course, the conference, which is, uh, yeah, something that we're both really excited about. I, I haven't really got anything to add in, in, until we like dive headfirst into the conference, because that is basically everything I've been doing. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's Fair been enough. quite an undertaking. It's, it's... Yeah. I undoubtedly, undoubtedly. Well, I just want to say, but you know, before we jump into that uh, fully, you know, I, I think you guys have been taking things at a very smart pace. A very, you know, it's uh, I I think it's you know, it's, it, there is a mistake in going t like too insane too fast, and uh, the, I think you've allowed things to brew in a very a very reasonable, wonderful manner. And John, I just want to say, I mean, you know, last time you were on the sh on the show, you, you gave me some spiel about not being a good video maker and all that. And now, four months later, I really do want to just say that, you know, the, the Antinatalist Advocacy Podcast is a wonderful, wonderful show. And I'm not just saying that because I happen to have been a guest. Um, it's You're a wonderful interviewer, and it's it's really a great podcast. So congratulations on that front. Uh, yeah, and congratulations, obviously, to both of you for ever, all, all the progress that a has AA has made so far. Um, so before we jump entirely into the conference, um, no, actually scratch that. So let's jump entirely into the conference because that is the big news at hand. So uh, next month, December 2nd and 3rd, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, uh, you guys are holding uh, really like a first of its kind event. I mean, really, you know, obviously there has been one conference, academic conference around the subject of antinatalism previously. I believe that was in 2018 or so in Ostrava, the Antinatalism Under Fire event. 
But antinatalists have never held their own event like this, really in any way, shape or form. So this is really a groundbreaking thing that you guys um, have have put together. You've gradually been announcing the guests and I am just, I could not be more excited about it. So definitely wanted to have you guys on to talk all about it. I want to talk a little bit about the tagline um, mm. for the event. It's uh, antinatalism at a crossroads. And um, I, I think that's that that sparks, you know, the, the little synapses in my brain, quite quite a many of them go off at those <laughs> words, because I feel like that is truly a very meaningful statement. But I'd really love to hear both of you expound on that a little bit more. What is what is antinatalism at a crossroads mean? Where are we right now? And where where are we going? What are the paths we could take? Well, um, so I can tell you what the idea was behind it um, in my head. And then, John, if you've got anything to to add, then then shoot. So um, the reason we went for that tagline was because we both, to be honest, the reason antinatalist advocacy came around um, was because when John and I first met, and this is not going to be a love story, but when John and I first met, um, we had a conversation about how um but both of us you know really want to um like help engage the more of the antinatalist community in in actively doing something you know uh, productive to make the world a better place through from an antinatalist perspective um and we were really inspired by the the you know the ideas of effective altruism about you know really putting some thought into where we should um where we should put that effort rather than just putting it into the first thing that comes to our mind. So um, the, yeah, AA, AA sort of came out of that, that conversation we had. And when we were having that conversation, we were talking about, you know, there is sort of a bit of a blooming activism scene uh, in antinatalism. We're seeing more and more people engage in it. We're seeing in Israel, in Japan, in, in, in the U S in the UK um and a, a lot of it is is based around uh street outreach engaging people on the street um there is also a lot of stuff online as well you know people make youtube videos people do social media posts in general um but what what we saw was we saw specific um forms of activism taking shape which we kind of um suspect were adopted from animal rights activism in it's sort of you know it, because a, a lot of the people that do antinatalist activism also happen to do a, animal rights activism um and you know one of the traditional forms of animal rights activism is street outreach and also doing stuff on online so i think those forms of activism came quite naturally to antinatalists that wanted to go out and do something or a lot of them anyway um and as as john and i sort of saw this we we thought <coughs> like antinatalism or the antinatalist community is really at somewhat of a crossroads where it's just beginning to bloom into more of a activism based community or have or have a more significant um activist element to it you know rather than just being like an online community if you could call it community really because it's not that cohesive either um and so that that was where the idea for antinatalism at crossroads came from uh for, for two reasons the first one is um we're at this point where we are a lot of us are moving into being more active but we've also got to decide what path we want to go down in terms of what form of activism we want to do and 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 when i think maybe actually the tagline could be a bit misleading because antinatalism at a crossroads kind of somewhat suggests that you need to pick a road and and take it and actually, that isn't what John and I is suggesting. We're not suggesting there's one form of activism we've all got to agree on and and, and take that road. Um, so it may be somewhat misleading in that way. But the general idea behind it was that we're at a fork in the road and we need to have a conversation as a community um, as to what is even the goal of the activism we're doing and then what form of activism do we want to engage in based off of that and i mean we'll get into it more but 
you know, because that's the tagline, we wanted to get people of different perspectives talking on different issues who take different approaches to speak at this conference. So that's why, you know, that, and we'll go into who we've got on the subjects we're going into, but that, that was the general idea behind it. I don't know if you've got anything to add, John. No, definitely. I think you've explained it really well. Um, one of the things that I was quite conscious of when we were first talking, Lawrence, was how in the early days of activism, like decisions that movements make can echo through the decades. To use a really pertinent example, in the environmental movement, a significant chunk were against nuclear power. And whatever you think of that, that had real world consequences in terms of like Germany and other countries shutting down a lot of their nuclear power plants. Jobs, it became a big deal last year with the uh, Ukraine war and gas from Russia and this kind of thing. Um, so decisions that are made in the early stages are really key. I mean, as you're talking about, Lawrence, the, if you try to change the animal rights movement in terms of how they do things, that'd be quite difficult because certain strategies are really um really well established and as you're saying lawrence there's so many things to decide on the kind of activism we want to do the end goal who is included within antinatalism and it's not like lawrence and i have figured all of this out we're just uh two morons who <laughs> trying to push you know trying to try to really get the conversation going um and as you're saying like we need we do believe we need to have a conversation as a community um, and be quite deliberate as we move forward, because the decisions that we make at this early stage can be really impactful for decades, even centuries to come. Um, so, yeah, I think there are, to use the crossroads analogy, it's not like one path or another. It's almost like there are many, many crossroads. <laughs> you go down that path and you've got another decision to make. And then you go down that path and you've got another decision to make. Um, so, yeah, just really trying to spark a conversation uh, obviously, we have a certain perspective that obviously we agree with and we have you know, reasons to believe in that, but we're not claiming to have all the answers. We want people to engage in the conversation in good faith and really try and help shape what antinatalism will look like going forward. Yeah, beautifully stated, both of you. I, I I really hear loud and clear, you know, this is not about trying to find it. You, you guys are actively embracing the sort of diversity of paths that this thing takes. I mean, you know, like, like we've said many times, antinatalists can't generally agree on very much of anything except for this sort of basic kernel deep within. Um, but I mean, I think that, you know, when I hear antinatalism at a crossroads and I see that as part of a, a statement within an antinatalist organization or collective or, or whatever you guys want to define yourselves, um, you know, it's really taking a stand against stagnation within the, the community, which I think is sort of, I think it's sort of where we've been at. You know, there's so much um, fear about antinatalist activism in general and going down that road. And so I think like you guys taking the approach of like, we don't, we're, we have, we have multi paths that we can take. There's many forks in this road, but what we're not going to do is like stand still. And I think that's sort of been an issue with, with where antinatalism is going is it just sort of seems to be a bit stuck in my opinion. Anyway, it sort of has, has seemed to be in sort of a, a holding pattern um, so I really just applaud you guys for taking that stand. It's like, let's get it on the road. Let's start walking. <laughs> you know, we're not really, you know, there's, there's, again, there's many paths we can take, but the important thing is we're putting one foot in front of the other. And that's, that's what, that's what needs to happen. So that's excellent. Absolutely excellent. Um, well, um, unless there's something else you guys want to add to that, um, I'd love to start talking about the guests real briefly, though. I just want to say that, you know, in addition, you guys have started to make some videos together uh, on like Lawrence's channel. And mm. I just want to direct people to, um, you know, the video that you guys recently made reading antinatalist hate comments. It's oh, just, yeah. <laughs> it's just such a great video. And I, I'm, I'm pointing it out just because I wanted to say that, like, you guys have excellent chemistry together, which is, is, is great. I mean, it's really a value valuable thing. So I, I, I hope to see more of that kind of kind of stuff in, in the future. So good, good, good. All right. Well, let's move on uh, directly, formally uh, onward. We charge into news about the conference. So what is the Antinatalist Advocacy uh, Conference? Uh, what can we expect those days? Um, I want to hear all about it. How can people stay up on uh, the ever increasing news about it? 
Yeah, so I will give a quick sort of intro to the to the structure and what what people can expect, and then I think John will go a bit into the thought behind um you know some of the uh, topics and stuff. So huh, a bit about just the basics of the conference. So as Amanda's already said, it's going to be split over two days. Now we could have fit it in one day, but we wanted to spread it over two days for two reasons one um it like it is our first go at a conference so we didn't want to just have too much in in one go so we're sort of doing two half days um the first day will be a saturday the second of december and the second day will be a, 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 a sunday the third of december and um we will have uh three sessions on each day um the i believe it's this way around the first day is in the more Oh, wait, I forget which way. Oh, wait, I've got it here. So the first day is in the sort of middle of the day GMT time, so based in London. But all of the literature we, we will release about the schedule will also have other time zones on, so people don't need to do the conversions and stuff. The second day will be later in the day. And the reason we've done this is because we wanted people from all around the world to be able to tune in live at a reasonable hour right so we we've taken two days and sort of um put them at different times so that different people around the world will be able to you know it, one part of the world it will be a reasonable time for whatever day and you know the other part of the world it'd be a reasonable time for the other day um so <laughs> as i said there's three sessions on each day um five of the total sessions are speakers and one of them is a panel um and we have a welcoming address and closing session on both days as well. And at, at the end of both of the days, we'll also have an informal hangout, which, you know, any anyone's welcome to come and, and hang out at. That hangout doesn't have a structure or anything. It's just people can just come and, you know, chat about what happened at the conference that day and that sort of stuff. Um, so I think that's... Oh, and then for people, if people want to keep up to date with it so the best place to get all of the comprehensive updates and make sure you don't miss anything is the newsletter and i'm sure amanda you won't mind putting a link in the um in the show notes for this you got it um people can also follow uh on x um on instagram and facebook we, we we've been having issues with instagram and facebook but they're now up so people will be able to follow those and also the actual conference will be on our youtube channel so if you subscribe to the youtube channel you won't miss the actual conference uh they, they will be live streamed from there free for everyone to come to no ticket or or um or uh payment is required um it, it's it's accessible for everyone um yeah i think that's all of the basic sort of uh structure john do you want to go over what did you what you wanted to go over oops realized i didn't unmute myself this is why i'm not very good at podcasts because i <laughs> still haven't figured out how the mute button works um yeah i think you covered everything in terms of like the basic kind of format and um, we're really keen to make it as accessible as possible so making it free on youtube hopefully a platform that anyone with an internet connection um and i guess you know government and lets them access youtube uh can get onto um and yeah with the, the different time zones as well across the two days so we are hoping as many people as possible can tune in live but we will be releasing the talks afterwards like over the coming weeks and months afterwards for anyone who can't join on the day as well and um, in terms of the the topics that we covered uh we had we really wanted to cover a broad range of topics, everything from, um, well, I can think of some of the topics now, like what, would it be a good thing for humans to co-extinct? Um, are animals included in antinatalism? What on earth would antinatalism mean for wild animals if they were included? Like, I think people have an idea if we include like domesticated animals, what they might look like, but you know, is it feasible to use contraception in wild animals as one of them? Um, what would a positive antinatalist community look like, which is personally the one I'm looking forward to the most, because I think that is just so key to whatever we do going forward. Um, a huge range of topics, a huge range of speakers as well. Like we had a whole list of people that we wanted to get involved and 
we'll get into some of the names shortly, but I've just found that people have been so generous in terms of their time, like they're giving up their time on a weekend for free. Like we've managed to pull this together on a shoestring budget. Like we've had to pay for the odd subscription here or there. Um, and yeah, they've been so generous in terms of coming forward and, and helping us along the way. So really grateful for everyone uh, who has agreed to talk and yeah, I'm super excited. Did you want to go through the list, Lawrence, of who's coming on and when? Um, yeah, absolutely magnificent, guys. Just everything. The, 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 we're going to get to the list of guests in a second, but all of the, I mean, I have to say, I'm just so impressed by the, the guest list. I mean, it's it's really quite a star-studded cast, if I don't say so myself. And it is uh, uh, the, the range of topics and, and the bravery, I think, honestly, it takes to... Um, skirt some of these issues you know within within this first conference is just really really admirable and i'm just I, I honestly just really could not be more excited about it so with that having been said uh can we talk a little bit about your magnificent uh guest list uh starting with the first guest that was announced uh mr david pierce so Tell me a little bit about David Pierce. Um, I mean, obviously, anybody listening probably knows, but uh, if you could give a little introduction and sort of why, you know, why it was so important to have David Pierce uh, represented in the conference and uh, what what we can expect from his lecture. Yeah. So people might notice that uh, quite a few of the uh, guests have actually been on the Exploring Antinatalism podcast. I think most of them, actually. Um so if if people want a little primer on any of the guests that you um that you see in the backlog then go and check those episodes out. Yeah, so David Pierce. So for anyone who doesn't know who who David Pierce is, I'll I'll give a bit of a uh, introduction as to who he is and then why we've uh, why we've invited him uh to give the talk he's going to talk. So he's going to give. So so David Pierce he's um He's a, uh, a British philosopher um, who I think is probably most uh, known for his transhumanist views. So he wrote, I can't remember exactly when it was he wrote it, but he wrote The Hedonistic Imperative. And uh, and then he went on to found, oh, I'm going to forget the name now, but it's, it was something like the, um, right, he, he wrote it in 1995. And he, he helped set up, and I'm going to forget the name, but it's, it was something along the lines of like the International Transhumanist Society, but it's it's now known as Humanity Plus. And um, yeah, basically, um, the reason we invited him is because he himself is um, an antinatalist. He he doesn't think it's right to bring new beings into the world. He, he will not do that himself. But um, he has a... A, quite a divergent perspective from many other antinatalists. So many antinatalists say that, um, you know, because we're antinatalists, we should pursue human extinction or we should pursue a wider extinction of of all sentient life, right? And David Pierce, while whilst I'm sure he would agree that that would be, you know, a, 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 a universe without life would be a better one than a universe with sentient life, he doesn't think that I, that is something that is even remotely practically achievable. What he thinks is more practically achievable is, um, I, I guess, what he would refer to as a a regime of genome reform, um, and what he calls a bio happiness revolution. So, if you think about it like this, um, David Pierce and antinatalists that want to pursue um uh you know uh extinction or 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 wide non-reproduction they're both dealing with the same equation which is coming into existence equals suffering right now antinatalists or traditional antinatalists want to take the coming into existence out of the equation and then suffering goes away right whereas david pierce focuses on the other side of the equation and says well actually if we take suffering out then we're kind of removing the issue that we have with coming into existence in the first place. Um, and so what he wants to, to help bring about is a world where there is essentially no suffering. He wants to abolish suffering. And he wants to do that through a mixture of uh, genome editing, 
um, new technologies, transhumanist technologies. Um, and that's what he's going to be giving his talk about. And, you know, the reason we invited him is because we said antinatalism, we, as we see it, is at a crossroads and we need to know what is our goal and how are we going to pursue it? And David Pierce proposes a completely different goal from most other antinatalists, which is we shouldn't be aiming for non-procreation. We should be aiming for abolishing suffering via genome reform and the use of technology. Um, and so that's why we wanted to uh, include him, because we thought he has a completely different perspective on the same issue as antinatalists, and he is one himself. Um, and we thought it was a we thought we thought it was a, a voice worth including in the mix. Um, John, do you have anything to add on David Pierce? Yeah, I was going to say when you said he has a different goal, I kind of disagree. I think he has the same goal, which is to, uh, you know, stop the harms of coming into existence as they are now. He's almost got a different means of doing it, uh, of stopping those harms from occurring, and. I think he's a, a really fascinating and important voice, point. Sorry, important uh, voice to have in the community. Like I do see some antinatalists who are very against his work because they think that he's on team natalist or because because even some of the people who agree with his work think that you know coming into existence is a good thing. But I think no, no, he we have the same goal as him. We recognise that. The way that sentient life is now, as you know, like the Darwinian game, it doesn't. There's there's no no reason to say why it should go well and why we shouldn't suffer, why there shouldn't be harm. And he recognises that problem and wants to solve it. So really excited to have him on board. And unlike some of the guests, he is, as you say, Lawrence, he is like a self self professed, self identifying. I'm not sure. He says he's an antinatalist. Like that is the label that he identifies with. Yeah, well, there's absolutely no question that David Pierce is one of the most important voices in antinatalism, and his perspective has had um, a, a really huge impact, and it is a really divergent mm. path next to extinctionist antinatalism. So whether I have agree with agreements or disagreements with him or not, like I am overjoyed to see him represented because I think that it, th that conversation of, of do we go the path of extinctionism in whatever form that takes or transhumanism, I think that is one of the most important um, conversations within antinatalism today. So it's great, great, great that that's going to be represented at the conference. So congratulations on that, guys. That's absolutely awesome. Um, well, if there's no more to say about uh, Mr. David Pierce, uh, and what day will he be presenting on, if I may ask? He'll be on the first day. So we'll go through the guessing in order. So okay. he will be the yeah. first speaker on the first day. Excellent. I can't wait for that. Absolutely can't wait for that. So now that we've spoken about David Pierce, uh, let's move on to Seb Alex, who actually I don't know very much about. Um, mm. So yeah, please tell me, tell us all about uh, who Seb Alex is and what he'll be talking about. So Seb Alex is a YouTuber, veteran, animal rights activist from Lebanon. Um, and one of the first people who I came across who was an antinatalist. I do remember that. Um, I remember making a post and talking about it in one of the videos about uh yeah, about antinatalism and avoiding harm by bringing others into existence. So as a veteran animal rights activist, we're going to be the focus of his talk will be antinatalism for domesticated animals and particularly with respect to animal agriculture. Um, so we have multiple different cause areas of antinatalist advocacy, which we went over in detail in the previous episode on this channel. So, yeah, really looking to hear his perspective. Um, also, in terms of like building a global antinatalist kind of community, he's very much involved in vegan activism in the Middle East um, and community building there. And we're going to talk about if there are if there are any parallels, any opportunities for building uh, an antinatalist community there as well. Because I do understand that there are some Arabic-speaking Facebook groups, antinatalist Facebook groups, with hundreds of thousands or even a million or two members. Um, so yeah, we'll see if we can kind of unlock that potential as well. Excellent. Anything to add, Lawrence? Um, 
No, not really. Just, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to have Seb on. I think he's someone who, I mean, he focuses, you know, 99% of all his energy on on animal rights. Um, so he he's not someone who a lot of antinatalists will be familiar with. Um, some may be, but, you know, a lot won't be, if, especially if someone is an antinatalist who doesn't really engage with the animal rights community. Um, but Seb, Seb is a... Um, really nice guy uh and uh yeah looking forward to having him on yeah that's extremely exciting i mean i i'm i'm actually like i mean the fact that i don't really know very much about his work is like it's particularly exciting for me and that he comes from such a strong animal rights background that's always awesome and that he comes from the lebanese context which as you guys just said i mean yeah that's a that's a huge it's a huge wealth of antinatalism going on mm. so any inroads bridges that can be created between those communities and um <laughs> is just absolutely awesome. So excellent. I can't wait for that. That is so exciting. Uh, well, the next guest um, is the wonderful Mati Hayri. So um, please let us like, tell us about what, uh, what Mati is going to be presenting on. So I'm sure anyone who's listening to this will know who Mati is because obviously Mati and Amanda have um, heavily collaborated together. So, Matty is um is giving a talk on antinatalism and extinction. Um, so this one's really interesting because uh Matty's going to be exploring the question of you know sh like can you separate antinatalism from extinction? What the what are the different forms of extinction? What are the ethics of extinction? Um, should you know should antinatal antinatalists be advocating for extinction um and i don't know if you mind me saying amanda but it's based can i say what it's based off yeah so you absolutely um, can yep great so uh matty is basing his talk off of a chapter or a section in an upcoming book that he has co-authored with amanda um so that's going to be really exciting, the book in and of itself. But obviously, it's going to be exciting to have Matty uh, giving a talk based on one of the chapters. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited for this one. Uh, I've read over the the chapter of the book that Matty is basing his talk on. So I've got a bunch of questions. John and I have come up with a bunch of questions for Matty. Um, so this one's going to be it's going to be really interesting because the topic of extinction is one that causes a lot of discord in the antinatalist community. So I think it will be really good to have someone explain all the different ways that we can perceive extinction um, and what those all mean. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. Uh, John, have you got anything to add? No, I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um just looking back over the first day of the three topics that we're covering, uh, transhumanism, uh, whether or not antinatalism should include domesticated animals and what that means, and then the topic of extinction. So hopefully there's something controversial and interesting there for everyone. Um, yeah, really, really looking forward to the talk. Yeah, well, I can definitely assure everybody that Mati's lecture is going to be absolutely sensational. Um, I do, I, I have, I have seen a thing or two and heard a thing or two. And yeah, as Lord said, it is based on a chapter of our upcoming book, which is called Antinatalism, Extinction, and the End of Procreative Self-Corruption. Um, unfortunately, the book won't be out, but I don't think anyway, mm. by the time um, the, le the lecture comes out, the conference is, is on. Uh, we don't ha quite have a, 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 a release date yet, unfortunately. Unfortunately, but it is in the works. It will be released from the Cambridge Elements series. So we're very excited about that. And yeah, I think honestly, the juxtaposition of having Mati on, who's a you know an extinctionist with David Pierce, I think that is just going to be just electric. Like I, I just absolutely am so excited to see uh the conversation afterwards of like, you know, those 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 very different perspectives yeah. uh, on the matter. I think it's gonna be uh really a sensational day. Not to not to um make less of 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 Seb, of Seb Alex's contribution to the conversation too. I think all three together, that's just gonna be um really, really, really sensational. So I absolutely mm. cannot wait. So that and, all uh, said oh, and sorry, done. Oh yeah, go just, please go ahead. Sorry, mm, yeah. just, mm. say, just to reiterate, we really want to hear your thoughts as well. Everyone's thoughts who's listening. There will be Q and A during each of the talks yes. and we will try and uh 
get someone. My girlfriend has very kindly agreed to be on tech duty on standby with all the Q&A questions. So they will get funneled to us. Um, and as Lawrence was saying, we're going to have uh, a bit of a hangout afterwards to hear all your thoughts as well. So, um, yeah, we really want to hear what you have to, what you think about uh, what the, the different the different guests are saying, uh, where you mm. agree, where you disagree, whether you're offended or amazed or both. Um, yeah, just wanted to add that. I, and t- t- truth be told, I'm almost looking forward to that like more. Like I, I cannot <laughs> wait to see you know people's reaction to the conversations <laughs> that ensue. Um, so excellent. So that that's like day one spoken for, right? Those yeah, those three lectures. One. Excellent. Okay, and then with the added addition of 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 the hangouts and everything. So then moving on to day two which is uh, December 3rd, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Uh, that day will begin with Oscar Horta. So yeah. um, I was like elated to hear that Oscar Horta will be uh, represented within the conference. So, yeah. Please tell our, our audience everything about Oscar Horta, what he'll be presenting on and, you know, just congratulations for having him uh, be in the conference. Yeah. Do you want to start on this one, John? Yeah, I'll go for this one. Although Lawrence, you obviously be hosted. Uh, this particular talk. Uh, so Oscar Horta is a Spanish philosopher who specializes in animal ethics, but specifically ethics around wild animals. Um, and following on from the talks on the first day around, well, I think all three of them, whether or not animals are included, extinction, uh, you know, the Darwinian game and natural selection and suffering. Uh, this conversation of what on earth antinatalism means for wild animals, I think, is a fascinating one. And as we said the first time we came on with uh, just to introduce antinatalism advocacy, we are trying to be quite solution focused and uh, think about ways that we can take action. And for this one in particular, a key focus is going to be the use of contraception within wild animals, the ethical and practical concerns. Um, like building a support for it because as you can imagine a lot of environmentalists have quite a rosy view of nature and not wanting humans to get involved in that kind of thing um so yeah i'm really really excited for that particular one i'm a big admirer of oscar halter i came across the topic of wild animal suffering almost by accident about four and a half years ago and his writing and speeches were really inspirational so really happy to get him on and especially for such a solution focused kind of issue related to antinatalism yeah i'm um i'm super looking forward to um to oscar's talk i think it's going to be good to have oscar on because um one thing well two things the first thing is that um Wild animals is obviously a controversial topic in antinatalism anyway. Um, but those of us that, uh, well, in Oscar's talk, we hope that it will uh, illuminate to those who uh, don't know why antinatalists are concerned about uh, what's happening to wild animals. Um, I hope that it will illuminate why uh, a lot of antinatalists do care. Um, but obviously, being antinatalists, we think that, well, not think, we know that the only way to guarantee the prevention of any harm to someone is 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 for them not to come into existence. And so obviously, when it comes to uh, wild animals and, and helping them, obviously, antinatalists are going to be particularly interested in the application of contraception, because that just prevents beings from coming into existence rather than trying to ameliorate their condition once they have, have been brought into existence. Right. So <laughs> that's going to be really interesting. The other reason it's going to be really interesting is because the use of contraception in wild animals is already somewhat discussed in antinatalist circles. And I think a lot of people um, have misconceptions about how, uh, you know that will uh how contraceptions can be used in in um in wild animal populations they're concerned about you know the bodily autonomy of wild animals and these are all topics and issues that are going to be covered in the talk and in the q and a with oscar and i think he'll be someone who will be um expertly equipped at addressing people's concerns um because i think a, a lot of people are resistant to certain 
um, ideas or implications in antinatalism because they are concerned about certain ethical issues they may bring up. And so we just wanted to deal with those ethical issues head on. And I think when it comes to this specific one, Oscar is, you know, is perhaps the best equipped in the world to talk about this, to be honest, um, if not one of the, you know, top three best equipped in the world to talk about this specific issue. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I, you know, Oscar is somebody that I, and I might be wildly wrong about this, but I'll say it and, and just, you know, could the, the chips will fall where they may. I don't <laughs> believe that he's ever actually published on the subject of antinatalism, but he's definitely been like a, like around, like he's, I, I just feel like he's sort of been on the outskirts of this conversation for a while. And he's, he is somebody that I've meant to reach out for to for a long time and i'm so i'm just like i'm just so excited to hear more from him because i feel like it's a it's a connection that's been waiting to happen for quite some time mm -hmm. and yeah if i'm not mistaken like his view is not terribly you know into it, it, as far as to do with 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 animal uh contraception it's not terribly far off from like someone like a karima kerma who also advocates sterilizing animals I, I mean i'm sure that there's some differences in their views but i mean i, I think it's I think that's a fairly reasonable uh, connection, and and obviously, as 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 a sentiocentric antinatalism, as a reverse biocentric antinatalist, um, as a as an ethicist, the I, the subject of how we intervene in nature is of of great importance to me, um, and it is a conversation that is very difficult to have. So I think Not that definitely. these these voices that are being able to have it in sort of a different a different way than people are sort of used to are just absolutely paramount to have represented within something like an antinatalist conference. So just absolutely good on you guys for, for, for getting uh, Mr. Oscar Horta involved. I absolutely cannot wait. So if there's no more to say about, uh, about him, um, I was going to say, sorry, yeah, please, no, no, go ahead. At the end, if that's <laughs> no, no, it's okay, of course. Um, hopefully people are noticing a pattern with the speakers. And I'll definitely continue with the remaining speakers where, we're asked we've asked people to come on and they have agreed to come on who don't absolutely agree or align with us as far as we're aware on every single issue and i think this is especially important for the next uh talk we're going to talk about the round table about building a healthy community where i think there can be a tendency in communities to spend more time arguing about the 10 percent of things that they disagree about than the 90% of things that they agree on. Um, and with some of these speakers, they might wildly disagree with us. I mean, as you were saying, you've got David Pierce and Matty Hyrie. I've apologies, I've butchered his surname, but Matty Hyrie. Um, very different kind of approaches to um, the problem of suffering in life. But the fact that they can both come on to this conversation and both have common ground, they're both, uh, you know, they they notice or they want to address uh some of the harms in life yeah i think it just shows that this is very much an approach that we're going to try and take going forward with antinatalist advocacy and hopefully the wider kind of community as well and i just wanted to commend you as well amanda because um with the exploring antinatalism podcast from very early on you've had people on who differ quite wildly who uh object stringently to the to the, to the chagrin level. of many yes thank you <laughs> but i think it's such an important thing for us to do because if you said i'm only going to listen to antinatalists who subscribe to my flavor of antinatalism and they go about the way things the way i want them to go about it we're really going to limit the conversation down to maybe 10 people um Whereas there is so much out there and there's so much work that's being done by people, um, which is of tremendous value to us as a community and is built upon, again, a lot of commonality, a lot of shared goals, a lot of recognising some of the harms that we're trying to counter. Um, so, yeah, that's basically the approach that we're taking and hopefully we can help kind of spread that approach through the community as you have done, Amanda with this podcast. 
Oh, thank you so much, John. I mean, yeah, I, keeping the tent wide, I think, is the only way forward. And that not only allows the diversity of, of, of that we have within antinatalism, but it also welcomes everybody else in, too. And that's what we need. We need to be able to build relationships and systems and coalitions and all those kinds of things, uh, relationships with other minds of of completely you know that may that may have some that may that may share some elements of of the kernel that may have you know we have to be able to welcome those voices in and that's the only approach so i yeah I, I, you know thank you for saying that and i also just really am um i'm so happy to see that that principle you know carried through to um to antinatalist advocacy and yeah it's, I, I in my opinion it's the only way um and so going on from that yeah the next Thing on the agenda for the second day of the conference is the Building a Healthy Antinatalist Community Panel, um, which will feature, now I, I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing uh, her, her name incorrectly, Shuita Ramkumar, um, who I'm not familiar with at all. I'm, I'm really excited to learn more about her. The wonderful Ash Wickety, who uh, some I've, I've actually met in real life, actually, uh, about a year ago, a little a year and a half ago. Um, she's mm. quite well known for being a part of um, Stop Having Kids. Yep. And um, I don't, somebody by the name of Amanda Sukunik, <laughs> I just, I don't, I have no idea. Um, yeah, hopefully yeah. that Amanda drops out. Nice. I, but <laughs> maybe, yeah, that, that would probably be the best, best for everybody. <laughs> I, I can say some of what I plan on, on, on maybe talking about, but I'd, mm. I'd love to kind of hear your, you know, both of your thinking on, on, on assembling this panel and what you, what you hope, you know, comes out of this conversation. And I'd love to learn more about uh, not only Ash. Uh, please tell us more about Ash uh, and 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 Shuita, because again, I, I really I know yeah. about Ash, but I really don't know about Shuita at all. Yeah. So, well, first of all, why did we want to have this panel? So, I mean, right from the start, we wanted to have you know a mixture of formats. So you know, speakers obviously standard bread and butter of, you know, uh, a conference, but um also panels are quite common at conferences. And so we wanted to have a panel and we were thinking about, you know, what topics should we do where we can get multiple people together. Um and we thought, well actually one thing that would be quite good was to get different members of the antinatalist community to come together and talk about the community, right? So we've noticed that I say we've noticed, I think everyone's bloody noticed that um, the antinatalist community is not as healthy as it could be. Um, and But like, to be fair, that's not specifically the antinatalist community. Any community that's based around an ethical issue has its problems. Or to be honest, any community has its problems. But I think when it comes to communities that are based around something that people really care about, it's a fundamental core belief they have. It, you know, flames can, you know, can burst out even quicker and even bigger really um and so with with my involvement in the animal rights community um over the course of being engaged with it there's been a few workshops that i've either seen happening or i've been to that have been about conflict resolution communication that sort of thing and i thought oh, actually that's quite cool because you're equipping people in a community with the tools that they actually need to, you know, with with tools um, that assist the lifeblood of a community, right? Communication is the lifeblood of, of a community. That's why we come together to communicate with each other. But when we communicate, conflicts can, can arise, right? So hence the conflict resolution as well. So yeah, anyone that spent any time engaging with the antinatalist community realizes that it has, you know, very similar faults as as other communities based around ethical issues and we wanted to put this panel together because we wanted to bring people together to spitball ideas to bring together ideas on how we can um become healthier as a community how we can engage with each other in a healthier way are there certain um modes of etiquette we can try and normalize in the community are there certain systems or structures we can try to put together that will help existing members of the community but also help new people coming into the community um as a sort of landing pad as it were you know so people feel more welcome when they come in they feel more in informed and all this sort of stuff um <laughs> we really wanted to explore all of that stuff because the 
the overwhelming what what we've been talking about in terms of the the purpose of the conference is you know the, or the tagline the antinatalism at crossroads is what is the goal and how do we get there but who's we we is the community right and are we going to get anywhere if we're at each other's throats all the time are we fuck so we really also need to um approach the topic of of um our own interactions with each other um as a community and how and how we can um lean more into supporting each other than than um i don't know how you would put it um than than fighting or bickering with each other um so that that was the the basic idea behind the the panel um before we go into the people john did you have anything to say on on the sort of idea behind the panel at all no i think you've covered everything really well there um okay it's a super important topic and as i was saying before perhaps one of the most important topics with respect to this kind of crossroads idea is what on earth we even want the community to look like before we decide what direction to go in. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to getting a range of perspectives on it. Yeah. So talking about a range of perspectives, where are the spe- perspectives coming from? So we've got, so John will be hosting the um, the panel. So here be shooting the shots, asking the questions. Um, and the three panelists are yourself, Amanda. So um I don't think we need to give an introduction to you, given that someone's someone is listening to this podcast. They know who you are. But for for anyone that doesn't know, if anyone's listening to this and doesn't know who Amanda is, um, Amanda has been around in the community for over a decade, right? Almost 14 years. Yeah, yeah. And um, so Amanda's been around a long time. Um, is very knowledgeable about the community and the dynamics in the community. Um, and actually, Amanda and I did a uh, a conversation on that on my channel um, about a brief, you know, a brief sort of history of the online antinatalist community. Um, but also, Amanda has been involved in many projects, and and Amanda and I have been involved in projects together. Um, and so we thought we wanted to invite Amanda because Amanda has got the the experience of the antinatalist community and the experience of trying to bring members of the community together to get shit done. Um, and, and so obviously Amanda will have, will be very knowledgeable about goings on in the community and the dynamics, but also um, the pitfalls that can, you can sort of fall into um, when you're trying to, you know, mobilize people or, or bring people together. Um Shweta, <laughs> Shweta um, is, I think it's uh, safe to say, although she may, dis- she may disagree with this, um, because actually out of everyone involved in the conference, Shweta is the person that I also know the, the least about. But um, so Shweta is, the reason we invited Shweta, so as, as far as I'm aware, Shweta is, is, is quite new to the antinatalist community in terms of actively engaging with it, although I may be wrong on that. But the reason we invited her was because actually um, some people may remember uh, that when we first started antinatalist advocacy, um, we had a, a third core member, um, Alana. And uh, when we were when Alana was uh, on board, um, she mentioned that she'd listened to an interview with a woman recently um, who was a child free community organizer. And we thought, oh, that's interesting. So um we uh we looked her up and it you know it was it was Shweta and so shweta has been involved in building a child free community um helping build a child free community and managing that community and understanding it in australia and so we thought and well and an important bit is that it's an in person community as well as an online one and so we thought that's a really valuable perspective to to have someone who is involved in a in-person community and has helped build it and and maintain it um and also it it does help that it's a child-free one so you know child-free and antinatalism aren't the same but the the community can can has some similarities uh so we thought shweta would be a really valuable voice and then the last person is ash wickety who many people um will know uh she's been on my channel i think i think twice um and um 
Yeah, so so Ash is a uh, as you said, she's involved in in Stop Having Kids. She's done a lot of of work with Stop Having Kids, and again, the reason we wanted to invite her was because she also has. So Amanda, you sort of have experience trying to bring people together uh, in the antinatalist community, predominantly online. Shweta has um experience bringing people together in person more on a social level um with child free and ash has experience bringing people together in person on an on a more activism level about antinatalism so so e each of you have slightly different experiences and understandings but they all converge around building a community and bringing people together so we thought you three would make perfect um a panel to to talk about building a healthy community so yeah john do you have anything else to say on on the people yeah definitely again i think you've uh definitely explained the reasoning behind why we invited all of you on um another thing as well like i was saying before which ties into not just being very insular and only looking to those that we agree with and everything um ash in terms of like the her experience with like animal rights and the animal rights community and Shweta in particular with her experience with the child free community there's almost like lessons that we can learn from other communities um both good and bad you know where, the, where things have gone well and where things maybe haven't gone so well um Lawrence and I and I think you as well Amanda have do have experience in the animal rights kind of vegan kind of community space um but I'm really interested to get Shweta's perspective from the child free community because that definitely seems to be again as an outsider looking in it does seem to be quite established and one of the metrics i have for this is really really basic is when i was setting up the antinatalist advocacy podcast there was one other podcast with antinatalists in it which is of course exploring antinatalism um whereas when it came to child free there were so many and there were so many child free facebook groups and child free in-person events but seemingly not a huge amount of overlap with the antinatalist community, which, as you're saying, Lawrence, the antinatalist community very much online, the child free, and also understandably in many cases quite secretive and something that people do behind closed doors. Um, whereas the child free community is much more public, much more visible, much more in person. So, yeah, really keen to hear any lessons that we can learn from someone like Shweta, who's been very involved in that. Well, beautiful. I just want to say, first off, thank you so much to both of you for inviting me on. I really can. I am, uh, am extremely excited for the panel. I'm extremely excited to meet Shuita. Um, I'm extremely excited to talk to Ash again. It's been quite a while. Um, you know, for my part, um, I think I will be um, not presenting, but I think you know, I, I have. Uh, I, I can't go into all the details just at this at this minute, but I have been doing quite a lot of research into social movements and thinking a lot mm. about how antinatalism fits into um, the history and the methods um, and, and the ways of kind of categorizing social movements that have kind of been active and, and, and um, you know, have been thought of in the past. Um, and so I, I definitely plan to sort of present or, or offer some of that research as, as, as a piece of um, of my contribution to the panel. But more than anything, I'm just really excited to learn, you know, from Shawita, from Ash and sort of see um you know how, how how our minds can kind of come together um and maybe you know uh, talk about a path forward um mm. i think it is really i i see th i see through uh your methods the two of you though to stick all of the all of the women or the women adjacent <laughs> in my case uh, on, on on the one panel and see how how the, how the mothers of antinatalism right can, <laughs> can can move this thing forward i'm just teasing i'm absolutely teasing no, but no. um but yeah it's going to be wonderful it really it really is and just once again thank you so much for for including me i really am very excited about it so well, it shows yeah. how uh i guess not very observant i am that that hadn't actually dawned on me until you... it hadn't dawned on me until just now actually i was like hey and i think that is really blankly obvious so <laughs> Apologies. We'll try no, no, not at all. It's funny. Repeat the stuff that we organize. <laughs>
Lovely, lovely. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, so looking forward to the panel. Absolutely can't wait. Um, so there's one last guest um, mm -hmm. that, that final day of the conference, and that will be Magnus Finding, who um, I think has made some really important contributions to this subject um, mm -hmm. over the years. I'm, I'm actually a really huge fan of the, the book that he wrote, um, uh, and I can't remember the title of it, but it had to do with wild animal uh, antinatalism, and I thought that was yeah, really the, quite, the, quite the, a seminal offering, actually. So, yeah, I'm so excited to see that Magnus will be uh, it, it represented. Please tell me all about um, him being in the conference. Yeah, so, uh, John, do you want to take this one, or shall I take it? Um, do you want to talk about his role at the conference? I've got a, a few cool. general yeah. comments on Magnus, yeah, yeah, yeah. basically how much I admire his work. <laughs> uh, you can talk more about his role in the conference in particular. Cool. So um so Magnus uh actually has a bit of a different session than than all the other speakers. So all the other speakers will be uh presenting giving some sort of talk, presenting something. Magnus, we have a slightly different format. It's a in-conversation format. So he won't be giving a specific talk, it will be a back and forth around you know questions that i'll be asking so i'll go into a bit about who magnus is and then i'll go into a bit about the sort of topics i'm going to want to cover with him um and then john you know you can sort of um, shoot your shot on this one as well so magnus is a well i'm not sure how he described himself but i would describe him as a, a sort of uh, a philosopher um uh, ethicist um uh, author so magnus has written on a variety of subjects but a lot of what he has written is about um ethics and how we can make how we can reduce suffering primarily so he is a big advocate for a type of ethics called suffering focused ethics so a lot in terms of his um, contact with antinatalism. So the primary contact he has had with antinatalism is about how it can be used in the pursuit of reducing suffering. Now, that comes up in some interesting ways because a lot of antinatalists would say, well, Let's just pursue extinction, no more suffering, boom, done. Uh, one of the biggest criticisms that Magnus has of, of antinatalists is that they advocate for extinction, actually, because he thinks that in the long run, that could actually result in there being more suffering in the world. Um, you know, because he speaks about wild animals, and he also speaks a bit about, um, you know, the future of, um, uh, you know, gets a bit sci-fi like sentient life elsewhere in the universe but also potential sentient beings that you know, <coughs> don't exist in 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 the form that they could exist so so new forms of sentient beings like like digital sentience so his primary concern is is reducing suffering and antinatalism can be a part of that but it's not the whole picture for him and so in the conversation and 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 just to note on a few few of his works, so uh, so his his key works that antinatalists will know if they're familiar with his with his writing are antinatalism and the future of suffering, um, and the speciesism of leaving nature alone. Um, then the subtitle is uh, the theoretical case for wildlife antinatalism. I might be getting a few of the words mixed up, but that that was the that's the general title. So th those are the are the two key works that I can think of off the top of my head that he's written uh, on the topic of 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 antinatalism that are relevant to antinatalism. So the topics that I really want to be covering with him are um, diving into what suffering focused ethics is, exploring all of the different ways that it interacts with antinatalism. How does antinatalism align with it? How does it not? Um, a few things on how can we as antinatalists respond in the form of activism we do to adhere with a more suffering focused view of ethics if antinatalists want to do that and also how can we 
as general people help suffering focused ethics propagate into the future because obviously as we all know there will be future generations they are going to hold ethical beliefs and so if we think suffering focused ethics is the way to go in terms of the ethical beliefs we hold we want to ensure it's more likely for them to hold those beliefs right so i want to ask him about that as well um i think that's a decent general overview of of him and and what the sort of topics that will be covered john did you have anything to say i think you've uh, definitely covered the topics um yeah definitely covered his role in the conference just wanted to say that uh, magnus's writings have definitely very much influenced me also in terms of well very much in terms of like the practical application of like how can we have impact what would the strategy be i think in terms of like broad strategy as a movement and really tying into this crossroads theme i think yeah some of magnus's writings are really important for informing that strategy one way or another that doesn't mean that we necessarily have to agree on everything but um he's definitely someone who has written about topics which are crucial to the direction that we as antinatalists take so yeah really looking forward to having him on incredibly exciting incredibly exciting i absolutely cannot wait for that um and so yeah so with magnus that would bring us to the end of of the magnificent offerings from this uh this first of what i hope to be many uh future antinatalist advocacy podcast uh conferences um and uh <laughs> yeah this is um really if if just an absolutely extraordinary um cast of guests and uh, I think it's really going to be uh, an absolutely seminal event um, in the history of antinatalism. So congratulations to the both of you. And um, I, I really cannot uh, express enough how grateful I am to be uh, a part of it at all and how excited I am for the for the show, uh, for both days of the show. So uh, absolutely wonderful. So after the event, uh, obviously that last day, there will also be an opportunity for people to meet um and and hang out now after each of the the, the lectures or the panel is there a like q a, a, a time period where people can ask questions i mean how how will some of that work out yeah so um it will differ depending on the uh the exact session um but in general how the format will go is the main session will happen. So each of them are 55 minutes. The, 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 the speaker will um will do their thing. Uh we'll we will then have some prepared questions that John and I have come up with. And then there'll be a section at the very end where uh people will be able to to ask to uh, what, what we well, so people will be able to submit their questions throughout the whole session. And then at the end, we will present some of them to, to the speaker. So there will be an opportunity for all of the sessions, um, apart from the panel, um, cause the panel, it's all prepared questions. Um, but, um, for all of the other sessions, there will be, um, opportunity for people to submit their questions and then, we will be receiving those questions and we'll, you know, we'll ask um, select uh, a, a selection out of that for the amount of time we have. Um, yeah. Excellent. That sounds absolutely brilliant. All right. So at once the conference is done, you know, what's, I, I mean, I, I know it's a maybe kind of even hard to, I mean, I'm sure you guys have ideas, but maybe even a, a bit hard to conceive of after this incredible event is, you know, over what, what would be, what is next for, for AA? What, what does the future hold? Shall I speak to you that, Lawrence? Go. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Um, So just say this is our first big event or first really big milestone with AA. Um, so understandably, this has taken up a lot of our thinking space. Um, you know, this is something that Lawrence and I do outside of our uh, nine to five. So um, quite a lot of our time, as Lawrence is saying, is, is really going into this conference and aiding that. But in terms of long term, um, we, we basically in our strategy have like a full year of um, disseminating ideas 
and building up a body of work um, to really try and get the conversation started um, around antinatalism and the kind of the path that we take. Uh, so we have a couple more ideas around, well, ideas about ideas is a terrible sentence, but so we, we have a couple more plans around idea dissemination. Obviously the podcast will be front and foremost of that, but we do have some other ideas around that. Um, and then we do also have some ideas Again, I'm being a bit vague because I don't want to say we're definitely doing this and then we get to uh, July next year and our plans have all changed because <laughs> it's still quite a long way off. Um, but yeah, around like empowering individuals to take action and put these ideas into practice because um, as I was saying before, it's really important to have conversations, get the ideas out there and spark the discussions, but we really do want to empower people to act upon those ideas and yeah, have that tangible positive impact. So watch this space. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, the conference is our main focus right now. Brilliant. Lawrence, anything to add? Yeah, a bit like John, I don't I don't want to say too much because um uh we have a range of ideas of things we want to pursue next year. Um in terms of just something that you uh, referenced before in terms of future conferences. So the conference is something we want to have inter iterations of. So this will just be the first, um, hopefully of many itera iterations. Um, and at the moment we haven't made like a concrete decision, but at the moment we're looking at doing the conference once every two years. Um, so it'll be like a, um, is biannual twice a year or once every two years? I think it's twice a year, isn't it? So not biannual, <laughs> but whatever, whatever the, the opposite. I was about to years. say biannual, but well, no, yeah, it's, it's not it's fort whatever. fortnightly, but in years rather than weeks. <laughs> um, <Four years>. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, the the conference is something that you know, if if people enjoy it, is something they can look forward to again in the future. Um. And yeah, e each one will have a different theme. So obviously as we've been talking about, this one is antinatalism at a crossroads. The next one, who knows what it'll be. Um, so yeah, I, I don't, yeah, I don't want to get into more specifics than that, I think, but John, John has already, John has already said, we want to really focus on helping um, empower people to actually take action um, and also continue to disseminate information as well. Definitely. And one thing that we are looking to do next year, importantly, is to grow our capacity. Um, as I said, it is just the two of us at the moment doing this in our spare time. Um, so there are numerous ways for us to try and grow our capacity, which we will be going public about at some point mm. next year. Um, but yeah, lots of ideas of how other people can get involved, um, different directions to take it. It's definitely, as I said, we're just, we're just two people who have a few ideas, but we really want, to get as many people involved and as many ideas being shared and lots of people's input because we definitely don't have all the answers and um, mm. but one thing we wanted to do we were keen to do before we did look to grow our capacity was have you know a bit of a body of work which hopefully the conference will be hopefully the podcast will be say this is the kind of thing that we're looking to do um, and hopefully we can take it to the next level and hopefully for your sake Lawrence as well if and when we do another conference, it won't be 90% on your shoulders because it has been quite an undertaking. Going back to June, I think, when you first started. So it's nearly six months of planning for this December conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah one, one thing to just add on to what uh, John has said is if people want to hear about um, the, you know, well, all, all information about the conference, um, and they want to hear about our plans for next year and they want to stay in the loop about, you know, when we're growing our capacity and stuff like that and potential opportunities or any events we run in the future. Um, the best place to follow is the newsletter. Everything will be in there. Um, so, yeah. 
Excellent. Yes. And all links will be below. Uh, I'll put the newsletter sort of, you know, front and center as much as possible. So please, guys, everybody go sign up for that uh, to stay up to date. Go check out the website. Definitely go subscribe now, I think would be the perfect time to the YouTube channel. And um, yeah, what can I say, guys? This is this is major, 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 major stuff. Just absolutely brilliant. I'm really, really, really proud of both of you. I hope you don't mind me saying. Um, and I'm just elated. I really, really am. I mean, developments like this are, you know, kind, kind, kind of kind of a big piece of what I live for. Um, and so uh, if it means, you know, it, it, it can be completely meaningless, but it, I, I'm certainly quite happy. I'm incredibly happy. I'm really, really, really so excited and um, just very, 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 just a huge congrats to both of you for putting all this together, all the work involved. And I just absolutely cannot wait. So um, it, unless there's anything, um, is there anything else that you guys want to say before we close out and and, uh, and just, yeah, please go right Well, I, I, I just wanted to say thank you to you for, you know, allowing us this platform to help, uh, you know, let people know about the conference. Um, not to get into details, but we have had some issues publicizing the conference. Actually, we've been shut down in certain areas, which I won't go into because I don't want to stir up drama. But I, I just want to say that because it, I want to emphasize the fact that, you know, you've allowed us on on your platform you've built. And we're really grateful because we can't take for granted, you know, being able to to reach people because you know it it is somewhat difficult in the anti natalist community because of the existing politics to be able to advertise stuff like this. So we are really grateful to you for um for allowing us to do this and also for for you know being one of the panelists on the panel for the conference. So thank you to you, Amanda. Absolutely, absolutely. You guys are more than welcome anytime. I hope that this will not be the last time you guys come on and tell me more, tell everybody news of antinatalist advocacy. I'd really like for this to be a regular thing. And uh, yeah, absolutely. And just thank you again for for having me be a part of it. I really could not be more uh, proud and pleased. John, any final thoughts? Um, just a, a huge thank you. Just to echo everything that Lauren said. Um, really do appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you to you, John. Thank you to you, Lawrence. And thank you both for being my guests today on the Exploring Antinatalism podcast, all links and news and all kinds of wonderful things in the uh, the description uh, to follow the AA conference. And um, once again, thank you so much for being my guest today, guys. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you for listening to the Exploring Antinatalism podcast. Please follow the podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Exploring Antinatalism can also be heard on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Buzzsprout, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Amazon.com, and so many other platforms. You can email me at exploringantinatalism at gmail.com, website designed by Visions Noirs. Please follow him at www.bionoir.com and follow him on Instagram. Logo art by Life Sucks. Please subscribe to him on YouTube and check out his shop on Etsy at www.etsy.com slash shop slash Life Sucks Publishing. Music by Mati Hairi. You can hear the whole song, Life is a Sexually Transmitted Disease with a Mortality Rate of 100% by following the link in the description. And make sure to also read his academic paper, which inspired the song, If You Must Give Them a Gift, Then Give Them the Gift of Non-Existence, in the Cambridge Quarterly of Healthcare Ethics on cambridge.org. Links below. All the best, and bye for now. Life is no thrill It's worse than meal So draw the right conclusion Let there be still